Good day. So let's start from our first texture and let's pick for that our leaf stop. Let's create a fill layer. Let's call it base color. And let's uh, select a suitable color for the base leaves color. I think something like that will be great. Okay. And let's uh, create a paint layer. Actually, on this paint layer, we'll be hand painting uh, of our base pattern. And let's call it uh, the same pattern. And let's add one more paint layer. Let's call it base. Uh, why I'm not drawing, uh, what I'm not will be drawing on the base paint layer instead of adding new one, because in this case, I will have uh, much more flexibility of changing uh, blending modes and opacity for every paint layer that I will be adding in the future. So you will see why actually. Uh, next one, let's add, uh, let's enable our wireframe, change color to black and decrease opacity a little bit so for having possibility to see our centered line of the mesh. And let's select our previously created hand paint brush. And uh, for our case, uh, will be much more easier to draw on UV map instead of 3D because in 3D we have a little bit distorted uh, mesh and uh, yes and over here we have um, perfectly aligned and overlapped UVs of both these leaves and as we want to wish uh, to draw in UV map we have to switch alignment from tangent warp to UV and yeah and let's go straight to the UV map and try to paint our first pattern. Uh, let's pick color something like that. Actually, let's pick this one and make it a little bit darker. And the first of all, we need just um, roughly marked where how our leaves pattern will flow. So something like that. Nothing fancy, just with easy hand movements, just just mark where this buttons will, will go. So you shouldn't be so accurate at this stage because we will fix it all this and perfection in the future super easily. And I will show you hi, uh, how, sorry. And yeah, something like that. And maybe this one like that. And if you don't like something, you can just Pick a razor and uh, erase it, and yes, and you can go back and forward to to find the correct pattern for you. So I just don't want to waste your time at this stage. Uh, I I just pause video for now and come back later when I when the base pattern uh, will be uh, ready. So our rough base pattern is ready. And uh, if yours uh, is not even so <laughs> accurate as mine, so please don't worry, I will show you why. Uh, so for now, let's add uh, some shadows to these patterns and some highlights. And after that, we will uh, fix uh, the shape uh, of uh, our pattern and make it more accurate. So let's pick this color just to change our size a little bit. And let's add this kind of maybe a little bit big, this kind of like a small shadows over here and over here and below every, every part of the leaf, something like that over here. And please always double check on what layer you are painting, because if I will painting on this one, for example, like this one, and I disable it, it stays on the, on this layer. So please keep that in mind. That's it. This oh, eraser. This is our paint. Okay, and uh, as you can see, I always rotate our camera with holding Alt and uh, pressing on the pen, uh, digital pen, 
uh, but um, digital tablet pen, but if you you can change it um, to any hotkey you wish. Something like that. It should be rough as well. No, no needs. It is not necessary to to add some really a great and accurate details from something like that. And over here, let's add a sh rough shadows as well over here and over here. And the next one, let's add some uh, small highlights. So let's pick that color. Let's go to the color. Let's put this over here and let's make it a little bit lighter and add the lighter part at the uh, at the edges so we will have a nice contrast between dark and shadow parts and after that we will blend a little bit more these shadows and lights to have more um more solid shape just like that and let's add some small highlight over here. Maybe some over here. Okay, something like that. And we forgot to add, yeah. Uh, and now we have to add some a little bit blending and smoothing between between these all three parts. And I will show you on the one part, for example, on this one, uh, that stops and shows uh, the end result. Okay, so for example, let's pick this color and let's add a blend like that. After that, let's pick this color and blend like that. And as you can see, we with this approach, we have some nice smooth blendings and transition. And after that, like this one, pick over here and pick over here and something like that. Please don't be so accurate for this stage. After After this, we will we will correct and make it more sharper and cleaner. So like this one. Okay, let's do it one more time. Let's pick this color. Let's pick, let's pick this color. Smoothing, smoothing with very easy moves. Yeah, like this one after that, like that one and like that one. As you can see over here, we have more smoothish like transition and over here and okay. Uh, let's come back in uh, in a sec. Okay, our base pattern ready, and everything what we need to finish on this stage is to fix it a little bit, make it more sharper and cleaner. And for this case, I just want to add one more uh, paint layer. This is only for visibility. A uh, comparison, you don't have to add it, you can uh, easily draw on the base um, paint layer by this is only for uh, for comparison purpose. So I just want to name it like a base fix. And uh, let's fix it. And to fix it, it actually is very easy. You just want to pick many times the shape and just to draw a little of the the shape a little bit cleaner and as you can see this is not a rocket science at all just yeah yeah just like that and if you would like just like that okay and as you can see now we have much cleaner result let's see like that okay let's fix for example this one very ugly and blobby and curved shape like that, just pick this color as you can see. We pick this shape like this one, just only painting over the the bed um, and an accurate shape, just like that. Okay, over here, maybe let's make it even more curvy. You always just want to just have to pick another color and change your brush a little bit. And that's all. This is all what we need for this task.
Yeah, like this one. Maybe we'll step a little bit over here. And yes. And as you can see now, we have much more cleaner shape. Let's look at yes. And you can see much more cleaner and much more sharper. So yeah, I, I will finish with all of these other lines and come back with you in a sec. So as you can see, the polishing of the base uh, pattern is finished and let's take a look at the difference. So this is with base fix uh, layer on. This is off, on, off, and on. And as you can see, the lines uh, now uh, looks more sharper and cleaner. And I just want to add a little bit more details to these leaves as well. And let's create a new paint layer and let's call it details. Actually, as it is. And let's add some um, more extra details to these leaves as well, like small scratches and imperfections. So what about something like that? It shouldn't be so accurate right now as we did with uh, base pattern. Lately, we will fix it. Something like that. Okay, here. This one will be smaller and some extra extra imperfection something like that. i don't know i think it's it's okay for our purpose for now and let's polish this details as well let's check our alignment yes alignment we have to switch to uv don't forget about this if we are painting on the uv map it's much more better to avoiding some artifacts um, from tangent rock to uv let's make them more narrower at the tips like that let's it wouldn't be so accurate this is only for for showing the techniques and what we will get by the end i hope that this imperfection will be much more much better than when I do like that and in a while I will add some highlights for these imperfections as well okay let's add color over here make this imperfection darker as well okay what about shadow part i think this is enough and let's add highlights to this imperfection exactly as we did for uh, the base pattern maybe in this case we have to be lighter and something like that always try to uh, play with the radius and for the hardness if you wish but for me our base um, brush that we have made before is completely enough for the for the most painted like painted stuff like that here oh, we don't have so light highlights but yeah okay more highlights here and let's some highlights for this imperfection as well and let's smooth by picking and um, and painting the closest area to make this highlights more smoothest look okay okay i think let's let's leave it for now and uh, if you remember that I mentioned before about uh, you should add uh, new layers, um, not instead of painting everything on one layer, because uh, for this case, uh, as I 
realize that maybe they are too visible and I want to change a little bit opacity of this imperfection for making the main pattern uh, pops more than the details. So for example, and for this case, I want to play with the opacity. And for example, the 50% of opacity is completely enough in, in my opinion for the extra details. So for, yes, for actually for, for these cases, we creating a new layers for um for painting some extra details okay so i will finish all other parts on the leaves and we'll come back in a second as you can see the details of the pattern is ready so let's take a look at the difference so this is uh, with without with without and I decrease the opacity of the pattern a little for avoiding uh, pops up too much, um, actually more than the base pattern. So it should work only like a support roll on the leaves, adding only extra, small extra details without too many pop popping up. Uh, so let's start working on the midrib. Let's call it exactly like that, midrib. Let's create a black mask and add a paint layer for uh, having possibility, let's call it base color, for having possibility to look what we actually painting. And let's add a paint. Let's pick basic hard brush and for our case size of two is completely enough. And for avoiding distortion while painting on the a UV map, let's change alignment to UV and a side space from object to texture. Okay, and let's try to paint the base, uh, the mask for the uh, midrib. Okay, let's hold shift and control. Okay, great. And let's make the tip more narrower. Just uh, invert our paint by clicking X and erase a paint on the top, something like that. Okay, I think this shape is completely great for our case. The next one, what we should uh, add is a color for the midrib. It's something between, let's pick something between uh, green and yellow the midrib always have uh, a little bit different color than actually the leaf so i think as a base color um, something like this is really good we can change it and tweak it later later uh, so the next one let's add a highlight uh, because as you can see our leaves have a little bit curved shape and when we add the highlight at the center it will really pops up and looks much better. I will show you how. Uh, so let's add a fill layer, let's call it highlight. Let's call it highlight like that. And let's change color to completely white and change it to value. Uh, it means that make this uh, all layer that below uh, lighter. Uh, so let's add a black mask and uh, for this black, ma black mask let's add a fill layer and pick over here like a gradient yes like this one disable repeat mode and scale a little bit the size of actually our uh gradient so let's take a look at the result just hold alt and left click on the black mask as you can see this is where our gradient will be let's go to let's go to the 3d mode and as you can see it a little bit pops up in the middle of the leaves and it looks much much better and the last thing what we want to add to the midrib is actually a yo from adding some shape to it. And I will show you how uh, make it procedurally or with filters without necessary to paint it by your hand. And let's create a new layer. Let's call it a yo. Sorry. 
AO. Change this color to, uh, okay, let's add a black mask and pick. So let's disable this one to get our original color. And let's pick this color and let's make them that. Let's add a highlight and let's add a filter that is calling uh, mask outline. And for actually this filter works, we need to add a mask and uh, our mask is uh, the uh, the midrib that we have been before. So let's duplicate it, hold alt and put it below our mask. And now it has the um, uh, the material of what it, it can add the uh, outline. So let's play with the uh, settings. Uh, let's choose both, disable true. And as you can see, we have a great result with very few tweaking. Let's decrease the width and let's make it blur a little bit more. And maybe it's too, too dark. Um, uh, actually, if we have a lot of different blending modes in different layers in one folder, so it's better solution for not overriding uh, with a normal blending mode, it's to pick path through. So this is just in case if you don't know. And uh, I think this really dark and let's make it more lighter. I think this one is, looks pretty good. Maybe the base color is too dark. Maybe make them more lighter, something like that. And the highlight is pretty good. And uh, as you can see, you shouldn't uh, write everything by, paint everything by your hand in hand paint action because uh, Substance Painter had a lot of great instrument, uh, had a lot of great tools and uh, filters and generators that could help you uh, do the texturing in the procedural way, even in a hand paint uh, style. Uh, yes. Uh, the next one, what we have to add is um, uh, AO layer that will really pops up and adds a really great illusion of uh, volume to our leaf. So as you can see, we have a pattern layer and we have a midrib layer above and in between, let's add a new layer and it, let's call it AO and change color to completely black and change a blending mode to value and a black mask and add a paint layer. And we will have two paint layers, uh, the middle AO and the outline AO. So let's call it, this one is for middle, middle AO, and this one for outline. Uh, for having uh, more flexibility by decreasing, increasing the opacity of these layers. Uh, so this one is middle. Uh, let's pick our previously created hand paint brush and everything. What I need to change is uh, alpha. Uh, if you write down shape and find in the bottom uh, this great option for this case, a shape thorn. Uh, let's pick it and let's go to our digital tablet and everything what we need to do is to change the size of the brush. And uh, I forgot about alignment. We are painting on the UV, so alignment. And this, let's try a texture. And let's try to paint on the our, our leaf. And as you can see, it's really dynamically adds uh, a volume, the magic of a quickly volume illusion uh, for our leaf. Okay, uh, we can decrease the opacity for the middle um, AO later, so don't get scared to draw hard. And uh, let's uh, switch to our outline layer, maybe decrease a little bit our size of the brush, maybe on the tips. Let's increase. As you can see now, our 
on the leaf have much more blobby looks okay okay that let's scare these two we are pushing too hard we can decrease the opacity right now okay so as you can see let's enable and disable and with AO it looks much more uh, uh, has the volume and has uh, the great illusion of the volume. Okay, maybe let's add a little bit more of the AO on the outline, like that. You can play with it as you are content, as long as you want. So maybe it's too dark. And now let's play with the opacity a little bit, uh, with the middle, maybe. 80 is completely enough. Uh, let's do this one, maybe for this one, it's completely enough as well. So, as you can see, with such easy trick, we will add the illusion of volume for our um, for our leaf. And the last one, what we have to add to our leave is some small post-processing tweakment that you always have to do at the end of your any hand paint texturing uh, process. Uh, so let's uh, close our layers. Let's create a new folder and let's call it post-processing. And let's create a few gradients from below, from the top and some small highlights for make our model more shiny and pretty so let's create new layer let's color uh, gradient bottom and let's pick a color something like very shiny blue color like that let's create a black mask and the fill and the gradient and let's pick this gradient and decrease the size of the gradient like that Maybe like that, disable repeat mode, maybe to this area and uh, change the uh, blending mode of the post processing folder to path through because we will be changing our uh, blending mode for uh, uh, layers that it contains and change to overlay this and decrease the uh, visibility, I think. But about to fifty percent, maybe, and maybe yeah, to fifty, maybe to forty. But we will play with this later. Uh, I will show you in a minute why I'm doing like that. Let's copy this layer above. Let's name it top, and uh, pick different color like exactly super uh, bright yellow color like this one let's go to the black mask put it in here we can in the sides it doesn't matter and uh, invert it go to the base color and maybe scale it to this level and decrease the opacity i think but about to 50 percent to 50 and maybe this one is to 40. And now, if you can see, uh, we have a really great result. Why well, I'm doing it? Because mostly in uh, all uh, lighter area, we should have more warmer colors, and in uh, shadowed area, it's more cold one, and it looks more natural and and yeah, and beautiful. So let's take a look at the result. Yeah, this without. Yeah, it looks really great. And uh, let's disable our wireframe and let's add one more layer above. Let's call it highlights. Highlights, make it completely white. Add a black mask, add a overlay as well. Add a paint layer and pick for alpha, our previously picked uh, shape torn. And just uh, with a mouse, 
click a few highlights on the leaves part like that over here in the in most lighted area like here maybe over here a few ticks here 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 and maybe some small over here and yeah maybe like here like there maybe one more here and play with the opacity uh, of the highlights as well to 50% is really good, I think. And let's enable, disable the our post-processing folder as well. As you can see, uh, this all small tweakments with gradients and some small mouse, mouse clicks highlights is uh, make a really great result for our, uh, for our texture. So, Please play with it, maybe add some extra details and maybe add some extra layers with some different effects. At the end of the video, let's make a small brief. Uh, let's go one by one of, uh, on every layer and uh, how actually we did it. So let's disable every layer. And uh, first of all, we have at the base uh, paint layer uh, fill layer actually is only with a flat color. After that, we paint our base pattern of the leaf. And then uh, on their own layer, we added a pattern fix to make it more uh, sharper and cleaner. After that, we have add uh, details and play with the opacity of the details. After that, we have created um, a midrib, make the solid color of midrib, create a black mask actually where this midrib will be located. After that, we added a highlight for the midrib and make a with a substance painter filter add uh, as this kind of AO to make it more realistic and it looks like uh, it has a, a round shape and after that we add uh, AO, AO for the middle part and AO for the outline and it's add even more volume for our leaves and the last part uh, is to adding a post-processing effect is a bottom uh, colder a gradient from uh, below, a more warmer uh, a gradient from above, and some small highlights on the leaves as well. So this is how we get it. I hope this first tutorial uh, was useful for you and see you in the next one when we'll be working on the back part of the leaves.